welcome to yet another tutorial from Learn Qt Guides. In this one, we're going to explore different ways you can develop graphical user interfaces using Qt. There are two technologies, Qt Widgets and QML or Qt Quick. So which one do you choose for your project and why? You may already know that Qt is a cross-platform application development framework you can use to develop applications for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and embedded devices. It is developed in C++, but it offers two APIs you can use to develop graphical user interfaces. Qt Widgets is an older API that is mainly used to target desktop platforms, so you can use this for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And Qt Quick is a new technology you can use to target mobile and embedded devices. These two technologies are built in C++ and they do provide a way you can interface or extend them using C++ or connect to what is already available in the Qt framework and use that in your Qt widgets or Qt Quick application. The first version of Qt came out in 1995. It was mainly written in C++ and it provided a C++ API that you can use to develop graphical user interfaces that mainly run on desktop platforms. After that, they tried to turn Qt into an ecosystem that would allow people to build applications for PDAs. These are devices that are really not phones or computers. They sit somewhere in the middle and they were a thing back in the 1990s or early 2000s. So they tried to make Qt be used to build application for these things. Fast forward in mid 2000s and they report that over a million devices already run this Qtopia thing, which was this ecosystem they were trying to push around to run on these mobile-like devices. Then in 2007, this happened. Apple announced the iPhone and uh, everybody was using it. And in 2008, Android came about and everybody was basically using Android or iPhones. In 2010, the Qt company tried to adjust to the new reality, so they tried to come up with a new technology that can be used to write Qt applications that can run on mobile devices and embedded devices. And they didn't do the API in C++, they tried to do something new that could be easily understandable by people coming from other technologies, and they developed a new language for that, which is QML, that we use today. So the vision for them was for people to be able to write graphical user interfaces in QML and put in components that would make Qt Quick applications look like native applications running on Android and iOS. And it was also usable on embedded devices. You see the example here. This is uh, some embedded devices probably running on Raspberry Pi. But you could do things like this in Qt Quick and you can do this today. Qt5, the current version at the time of recording this video, was released in 2012 and uh, it was a major revamp of the Qt framework. There was a lot of new things introduced at this version and they released Qt Quick 2, which introduced many improvements to the Qt Quick technology. In 2015, Qt on Android was officially released. It was a port of the Necessitas project on the Qt project, which was an effort to try and port Qt applications to run on Android. Qt for iOS was also released around that time, but I don't have an exact date I can share with you now. And from that time on, we could run our Qt applications virtually on any device you can imagine. They could run on Windows, Mac, and Linux, we could run Qt applications on Android, iOS, and embedded devices. This was pretty cool. Fast forward today, we have two technologies we can use to write graphical user interfaces using Qt. We have Qt widgets, which are an older technology mainly to target desktop platforms. And we have Qt Quick, which can be used to design dynamic and fluid user interfaces that can run on Android, iOS, and embedded. But make no mistake, Qt Quick applications can also run on desktop, and you can do that if you want. One thing I want to make clear by now is that Qt is not just about graphical user interfaces. It can do much more than that. And uh, on the C++ side of Qt, you can do things like networking, threading, databases, and all kinds of crazy things. Widgets and Qt Quick are merely a technology that allows you to put together 
graphical user interfaces that can run on any device. But if you are building a real application, you are mostly going to need to interface to C++ to take full advantage of what Qt has to offer. If you haven't seen what QML code looks like, this is an example for you to look at. It is a declarative language. You put little components together and you can put together prototypes very quick using QML. It is pretty cool. And this is what Qt C++ code looks like. It is basically C++, but uh, they put together components you can use to build fast graphical user interfaces using Qt C++. Okay, so now that you have an idea about Qt widgets and QML, and that you know that there is a whole gold mine of C++ components you can use on the C++ side of Qt, which one do you use, QML or Qt widgets? Well, if you are targeting mobile or embedded, you should use Qt Quick and QML because they have a lot of ready-made components that you can use to put together user interfaces very quick. And they are going to look pretty slick on mobile devices like Android, iOS, and embedded devices. If your main target is Windows, Mac, and Linux, these desktop platforms, Qt widgets are going to be very helpful because they are mature. They have been in development for literally over 30 years. So they are mature, they are tested, and they have everything you're going to need to build cross-platform applications for desktop. This is another way you can understand what Qt has to offer so far. We have two ways we can write our graphical user interfaces. We can use Qt Quick or Qt Widgets. If you want to put in some logic in your application, if your application is written in Qt Quick, you can use JavaScript to put in the logic, or you can use C++ if you want. You can interface to C++. If you are in Qt Widgets, you can use C++. This is pretty easy. And if you want to take advantage of what is already available on the C++ side of Qt, you can go this path and uh, interface to C++ from Qt Quick or you can directly use C++ from Qt widgets. So these are the options that are available to you. What I see most people do is use Qt Quick for mobile devices and embedded, and they use JavaScript to put simple logic in their application. But if they need things like heavy networking and threading, they interface to C++ to take advantage of what Qt has to offer. If you are targeting desktop, you're mostly going to go down this path and use Qt widgets, and this is pretty cool. It is going to work pretty well, but you can also use both. For example, for one application we are building for our client, we use both. We use a Qt widgets user interface for desktop, and we use a Qt quick user interface for Android and embedded, and we decide which user interface is going to be displayed at compile time when we are compiling the application. And this is pretty cool and you can do that. Now, a question I want to address that I get from many students is what should you learn? Well, if you are trying to develop applications for mobile and embedded, you should learn Qt Quick. And what you should start by is the foundations of Qt Quick. This is going to give you the basic knowledge to work with Qt Quick. You will know how to put in simple logic using JavaScript. And this is going to allow you to design full applications that can run on anything. They can run on desktop, they can run on Android, iOS, they can run on embedded devices, and this is pretty cool. After you are done with the basics of Qt Quick, you should learn how to interface that to C++. And this is going to make you able to take advantage of what Qt has to offer. If you are looking to learn Qt Quick and QML, we have a few courses available you can take to learn these technologies. This is a beginner's course that basically shows you everything you need to know about Qt Quick and QML. You can also learn how to interface between C++ and QML and uh, things like the model view architecture, and you can learn about all these crazy things. You can find the links to these courses in the description below. If you are developing applications for a desktop, you should really learn about Qt widgets. And uh, this is going to also give you a way to learn more about the C++ side of Qt. We also have a few courses available for Qt widgets. This is a beginner's course that is going to give you the basics you need to start developing graphical user interfaces using Qt widgets. And we have an intermediate course available that is going to help you build professional grade Qt C++ GUI applications. And it's going to show you most of the things you're going to use to develop applications for Windows, Mac, and Linux. 
If you are somebody who just want to learn about Qt and uh, probably land a job later, I do recommend learning both Qt widgets and Qt Quack. And uh, the best way to start is to start by Qt widgets and run your applications on desktop. This is going to give you the good basics you need to start learning about C++ and Qt. And once you know how to develop Qt widgets application, you can jump into Qt Quick and it's going to be much easier for you to master these technologies. Okay, after you have the basics about Qt widgets or Qt Quick, you can also learn more about the C++ side of Qt. You can learn about things like threading, networking, XML, JSON, and all kinds of crazy things. On the Qt Quick side of Qt, there is Qt 3D which is a technology that is going to allow you to put 3D content in your Qt applications. This is a fairly new technology that the Qt company is pushing around, but it is pretty cool. And I hope in the future, we're going to have a chance to do some tutorials on this. And you can do real QML projects and learn more about Qt. And it is really a never ending process to learn more about Qt and use it to build applications that you want to run on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and literally any device out there. Okay, I hope this video shed some light on Qt Quick and Qt Widgets and what you should use for your project. If you have any requests for a tutorial, please share in the comments below. We plan to do more tutorials on Qt and QML and all kinds of crazy things you can do with Qt. So if you want to be notified when we put a video out, please do subscribe. You can also follow us on social media or join the group that we have on Facebook where we talk about everything QT. So this is all I have today and I'll see you next time.